Are you one who regularly blesses other people? Well, this service is full of blessings. So come join together and let us bless one another. Welcome to worship here at Round Hill Community Church. My name is Shannon White. I'm the pastor for spiritual development here at Round Hill. And this is my last worship service with you. It's been my pleasure and joy to have been with you here part-time and full-time for the past two and a half years. I wish you grace and peace. Before we begin this service, there are a couple of announcements that I wanna make before we get into our time together. The Spring Fling is coming up on March 9th. If you're in the area, please RSVP and let us know so we can make sure to have everything available and ready. Church World Service packing event will happen in mid-March, and there are ways that you can give even remotely by ordering some of the, um, the needs that are then packaged here and sent around the world to people in need. And please check out our website for all ways during Lent in terms of how you can give and, and learn and worship together. Let us worship God. Our opening prayer this morning comes from the Reverend Fraser McNaughton of St. Magnus Cathedral in Kirkwall. Let us pray. Come into the chill of our existence, O God, and the cool of our soul. Bring the warmth of your presence and the glow of enthusiastic worship. Come into the routine of our church, O God, into the familiar nature of our relationships. Bring the joy of good friends, the assurance that there are those on whom we can rely. Come into our habitual ways, O God, the groove of our family life. Bring the inspiration of fresh challenges, the satisfaction of caring for our loved ones faithfully. O God, we rejoice that Jesus the way goes ahead of us. He is the pattern of our faith community, the direction of our future. O oh God, we rejoice that Jesus, the compassionate one, goes with us, calling us to acts of caring, showing us how much can be achieved if we work together. Amen. And let us pray together the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. Listen now for God's word. I thank God for every remembrance of you, always in every one of my prayers for all of you, praying with joy for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the end, until the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because I hold you in my heart. For all of you are my partners in God's grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the tender affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with the knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what really matters, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I have left congregations in the past, including the time that I left here at Round Hill last time in 2012, I've always asked myself, how do I leave well? I once asked that question of a coach with whom I worked. And he responded to me by asking which scriptures came to mind of leave taking. We discussed Jesus' death and resurrection, Jesus' subsequent ascension, and a story which has always left me somewhat melancholy, the story of Moses' departure where he addresses the children of Israel, telling them after all they had been through together, all the wanderings in the wilderness, that someone else, another leader, would have to take them into the promised land, even as they could see it in the distance. We talked about how the final weeks of my time might be seen in its entirety as a blessing and a benediction. Each week an action, each meeting with congregants, each interaction being a piece of a kind of mosaic, if you will, which would ultimately be seen as a final blessing. I liked that image. Now, I would never think of myself as anything resembling the messianic figure that Moses was talking about, and God knows that that's not true. Nor would I want anyone to put me on a pedestal. My job here has been to work as a part of an amazing staff led by your very abled and talented and vision-filled pastor, Ed Horseman to take you on a small part of the way, and now to hand that baton on to someone else, the next person who will take you the next steps until he or she passes it on to the next person in this position. So as I thought about this day, this sermon here online, I thought about a series of blessings that would be appropriate to celebrate our life together along with this part of the journey, and to bless you on your way with the knowledge that God has been with us, is with you now, and will be with you in the future. So we begin here in this sanctuary, where we sit, even if virtually. The sanctuary, a place which holds so many memories of hopes and dreams and prayers for stirring emotional, spiritual, and even physical connections with God as we interact with one another. Bless this place, O God, which brings us together for worship, for prayer, for music which soothes and inspires, for its flexibility to host God's people for the hearing of God's word in spoken word and in song, in silence, and in ways we treat one another. I bless the choir loft, which inspired, where inspired music is played and sung with excellence 
by our director, Leslie, our soloists, and our wonderful choir, helping us to reach deeper parts of ourselves beyond the spoken word. I bless our front stairs, our patio, as a pathway into our complex. People coming with all sorts of needs and desires, some met and some still seeking answers, as recently as, well, today. May our pathway always be clear, welcoming all people to come in and to go out freely. And the patio, which has been a place to gather for informal conversation as well as summer worship. May the shade of that tree out there and the beauty of the flowering plants so lovingly planted provide joy. I bless our solar panels, not only on our sanctuary, but the community house and the manse, and the energy behind our desire and calling to be a green church and community, supporting the earth's great resources and beauty and diminishing our footprint as humans on this sacred earth. I bless our office hallway where dedicated pastors and staff members have walked and gathered, exchanging ideas and collaborating for the last decades. The mixing of the serious and the hilarious, of tears and disagreements, of hysterical laughter live in those walls, which dare not utter some things. I bless the art gallery where the expression of artists is splashed across the walls, encouraging creativity in us all and reminding us of the many viewpoints which exist among humankind. And for all of those people who have gathered and will gather in those, along those paths, in the art gallery and in the hallways, may they know that they are loved and welcomed. I bless the pastoral offices where ideas are formed, where tender conversations of pastoral care have been held, where joys, hopes, and deep sadness, anger and forgiveness have all been expressed, where premarital appointments have been held and funeral arrangements have been made, where tears have been shed and the most precious ideas and theological questionings have evolved. I especially bless Ed's office. May he continue to grow and be given the energy and wisdom and strength to follow the Spirit's leading at this church as you all discern your path forward. I bless the church office where Linda and Krista, preceded in my tenure by Tanya Priyatka, have all worked tire tirelessly to ensure, ensure that the church runs smoothly and that all are cared for through a listening ear, a phone call, or an afternoon Zoom meeting. The office where Roland has a base point and from where he very ably takes care of our properties and generates a kind of hospitality through food which cannot be underestimated. Very few realize the pressures which rest in that office and on those wonderful people. Please don't ever take them for granted. Continue to be kind and gracious and generous to them. They are the keeper of many secrets. I bless our parlor, a place where hundreds and hundreds of gifted and interesting people have come together to gather for fellowship hour, educational events, festive lunches and dinners, for educational events for outside renters, or fundraisers, and for community events and for times of deep sharing of hopes and dreams as we open our hearts to one another. I bless that space where countless committee meetings have been held, utilizing the gifts participants share to help others grow in their faith in God. I bless the church school rooms beyond that and the nursery rooms places where our children meet to learn about Jesus and their belovedness as children of God, as well as their important part in the family of faith here at Round Hill. I bless Leticia Soltero and her predecessors during my tenure, Lizzie, Sid, and Tanya, 
as well as the teachers who have now gathered, Abigail, Carla, Michael, Yanis, Gabby, and Jacqueline, and all of the volunteers from the congregation who spend their time and use their gifts that God has given them to teach our children. I bless those rooms as well for the countless hours spent with Round Hill Nursery School. I bless our nursery and our faithful workers, Gabby and Carla, who love and share for our youngest children of God while their families are worshiping in other parts of the building. I bless the kitchen where delicious meals and coffee hours for church members and guests are prepared, welcoming people in the name of God and to hope that love is communicated in the simplest cup or a bite which is shared. I bless our community house, which has welcomed a host of community participants, dancers, dogs and their owners, countless children's groups, parties, important meeting, discussing important matters of governing and business, to harvest suppers and Easter gatherings and holiday festivities. May it always be a welcoming place. And the kitchen, which has been used to nurture and sustain our guests and members, as well as to feed the mouths of those who are houseless in New York City and this past Thanksgiving for those in need in town. That haven where composting warriors, our compost, composting warriors, gather to accept scraps from neighbors, which will in turn nourish the earth. I bless our church manses, one which welcomed at one point Afghan evacuees transitioning to their new homes, and now a family of renters. And for the home of Ed and Susan, a place which has provided rest for the clergy who have led Round Hill Community Church for decades. May its current residents find peace and rest and renewal within its walls. I bless the basement <clears throat> underneath us here, which houses storage rooms and a recording studio, affectionately known as The Crypt, and outreach to those well beyond our walls. May the podcasts and our digital ministries continue to help lead you to a worldwide audience. And if these past few years have taught us anything or reminded us of our situation, the church is never about the building alone. It's about the community of God's spirit moving in and through willing congregants, planting seeds and watching them grow into full-fledged ministries. And so the final blessing is for you, wonderful people of Round Hill Community Church. Be who God is calling you to be. Continue to serve your hearts out, as you always have. Welcome the stranger and give in uncommon ways. Continue to break barriers in your extravagant loving. Continue to think outside the box and be creative in your expressions. Don't settle for mediocrity and, re and religiosity. You never have. Speak with authenticity and be real with one another, with compassion. Don't settle for what you know or what's easy in ministry and dare to go out and experience something uncomfortable and new. That's where the spirit abides. But most importantly, remember this. Love God with all of your heart and your mind and your bodies and love your neighbors as you love yourselves. And you will be fine. May it be so. Alleluia. Amen.
Let us pray. Faithful God, your son taught us to pray and to never lose heart. But frankly, loving God, there are times that wear us down and we feel faint-hearted. We feel weary and close to giving up sometimes. And there are times, Lord, where we lose hope and give up. It is time like these that we need to hold each other up in prayer. It is time like these that we need to encourage each other. It is times like these that we need to be there for one another. It is times like these that we need to cry out to God for those in need. But God, it is not just for those in need. It is also for justice that we cry out. We pray for those who cannot speak up for themselves. We stand up for those whose rights have been violated. We seek peace with justice for those who need both. We pray for justice for those who are the weakest. We thank you for your justice at work in this world. We thank you for hearing our prayers and answering them. We thank you for showing concern and protection. We thank you for your mercy that you pour out with your justice. In all of this, may we be found faithful. Amen. And let us pray together the words of the Round Hill Community Church prayer. Our Heavenly Father, shed forth thy blessed spirit upon all our lives. Make each one of us an instrument in thy hands for good. Purify our hearts, strengthen our minds and bodies, fill us with Christian love. Let no pride, no self-conceit, no rivalry, no ill will ever spring up among us. Make us earnest and true, wise and prudent, giving no just cause for offense. And may thy holy peace rest upon us this day and every day throughout the coming week, sweetening our trials, cheering us in our work, and keeping us faithful to the end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now these words of blessing. May the God of surprises bring smiles and joys to your every day and ordinary. May the God of love be seen in all we do and say. Never forget what really matters so that you may live a pure and blameless life. May God who began the good work with you and in you continue to be at work in your life, bringing everything to completion on the day when Christ Jesus comes back again. Go forth rejoicing for the good work has only just begun. And may the grace of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with each and every one of you now and forevermore. Amen. As you carry the spirit of this worship experience with you, there are a few things that you can do that would make a big difference to us. Like the video, subscribe if you aren't, and click the notification bell and select all. Thank you.